Hi everybody and welcome to Fly High. This is another video in the mini-series about hazardous flight conditions and dangerous phenomena. If you'd like to learn more, join our online ground school where dreams take flight. Today we're going to study the loss of tail rotor efficiency, better known as LTE. For those who haven't seen the video on vortex ring state, I highly recommend watching it because it can help you better understand certain points in this video. Before we get into it, I'd just like to give you a big thank you for your likes, shares and words of encouragement. It's really heartwarming and keeps us going. So, back to LTE. Let's start with a short video clip and then discuss it afterwards. So this clip is published by What You Haven't Seen. The link is in the description below. <laughs> That's a cute little helicopter. Hey, Jack. Come on, bring her in. So you can see that the helicopter was spiraling out of control. But why is the question you're probably asking yourself. Let's take a closer look and rest assured the occupants survived the accident. The definition of LTE is a loss of tail rotor efficiency resulting in an uncontrollable yawing motion difficult to correct by applying the opposite pedal. It's induced by wind and not by a technical failure or maintenance error. This can occur when there is very little or no forward speed, usually below the speed of translational lift and where a lot of power is required. There are three different cases where this phenomenon can occur. Quick disclaimer, all the explanations in this video are for helicopters with the main rotor turning anti-clockwise, for example, the Robinson helicopter. This is important to keep in mind because it would be reversed for European helicopters. The first case is where the main rotor disc vortices interfere with the tail rotor. If you don't understand what rotor disc vortices are, there is a good explanation in the video about vortex ring state. This happens with a wind of 5 to 17 knots coming from the left hand side. So when you're at the controls, it's around your 10 o'clock position. This wind pushes the main rotor vortices into the tail rotor. The tail rotor is working in very turbulent air, so its thrust efficiency is very much reduced. You need to be very quick and reactive on the pedals. The second case is with a crosswind of about 5 to 17 knots from your left. So when you're in the helicopter, that's from your 7 to 11 o'clock. The tail rotor creates an airflow towards the left, so we have two opposing airflows creating a lot of turbulence around the blades and this induces a kind of vortex ring state around the tail rotor. When this happens, the workload on the pedals increases considerably. You need to be super reactive and quick on your feet and it's kind of like dancing on the pedals. The third case is with a wind of about 10 to 30 knots coming from behind you. So when you're in the helicopter, that's from your four to eight o'clock. The wind puts pressure on the tail fuselage as well as the tail rotor during maneuvers. The helicopter reacts like a weather vane with a sudden acceleration of the rotation. Again, the workload on the pedals is intense and your feet are dancing again. The danger of LTE is the rapid yawing of the helicopter passing through the three types of LTE as it rotates. If it's not stopped, the succession of these three types of LTE can lead to loss of helicopter control and a possible accident. The flight conditions where we are most at risk of LTE are flights requiring significant power. So you need to be particularly vigilant when flying in high altitudes, when it's hot, your helicopter gross weight is heavy and or your speed is slow. Now that you know a bit more about LTE, let's watch the clip again. You'll probably understand what might have happened. 
Notice the windmill? This confirms that there was a bit of wind. Talking about Jack, look at the way he's dressed and that beautiful blue sky. This indicates that it's hot. It's about 10.40 in the morning of September 25th, 2015 in Eustis, Florida, where the altitude is about 1,300 feet. We know it's a huge 300 and there are two gentlemen on board. They start the approach, slowing down more and more. Listen carefully to the engine. It requires increasingly more power. They're almost stationary in a hover out of ground effect. The helicopter starts rotating to the right, faster and faster, losing height until it hits the ground. So to summarize, there was a bit of wind, the speed was very slow, and the gross weight with two occupants was probably heavy. I'll let you draw your own conclusions. So how can you prevent LTE? Firstly, always know where the wind is coming from. Be very reactive and rigorous on the pedals and stay within the helicopter's performance limitations. If the rotor RPM decreases, the tail rotor thrust also decreases. Be very, very attentive during flights requiring significant power. In the Robinson Pilot's Operating Handbook, the safety notice number 42 covers LTE and I invite you to read it. Okay, imagine you're on a flight, you're tired or not very attentive and you lose tail rotor thrust. The helicopter starts to yaw. What do you do? Firstly, if you're quick enough and react before the helicopter starts spinning, you can immediately turn the helicopter to face into the wind and it'll stop. However, if you start spinning out of control, all is not lost. You need to apply full left pedal and if possible, slightly push the cyclic forward to gain a bit of speed. If your height allows it, you can also lower the collective to reduce power and slow down the rotation. The most important thing to remember is to apply full left pedal. Look at this picture. This position is not a typical flying position. Also, in an unexpected rotation, you're probably going to be taken aback and tense up on the controls, especially the pedals. You need to relax the pressure on your right foot. Otherwise, it can prevent the left one from pushing the pedal fully forwards. Try it every time you do your pre-startup checks. Be aware of how far you can push the pedals. It will give you a better chance of regaining control in an LTE situation. I hope this video has been useful to you. Till next time, fly safe and see you soon on Fly High. Mm -hmm.